measures to encourage parallel imports to block monopolies. How will the domestic distribution system change with the latest measures? India is President Patkinhe's first state visit in 2014. What is the implication of an economic cooperation with India, an IT and aerospace power nation? Various information shown on a large high-definition screen. Let's meet digital signage, evolving larger in size and higher in definition. Children's electric cars enhanced to the level of adult cars, excelling in safety and design. What is Hennessy's secret to success? Kim Jong-un puts emphasis on economy and construction during his New Year's address. Let's find out more about North Korea's industrial structure and economic status. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon, and welcome to BizLine. Now, President Park Geun-hye has just returned from a state visit to India. What were the outcomes for business and economics? We'll find out. We'll also be looking at some upcoming changes to the distribution sector, which might drive down the prices of imported products. And we'll be gaping at the latest advances in digital signage. So do stay with us. But before we go to those and other features, let's first take a look at all the breaking business and economic news hitting headlines across Korea this week. Korea's banks plan to increase lending to small and mid-sized firms this year as the economic recovery gains pace. The Financial Services Commission said that lending to smaller businesses would rise by 33 billion U.S. dollars this year, up 27 percent from last year. The bank's move is in line with President Park Geun-hye's drive to protect the financially vulnerable and expand support for small firms. The Korean government has pledged nearly 660 million U.S. dollars for the country's basic research projects this year. That's about $17 million more than last year, and the science ministry says it will work to reduce competition in selecting candidates for financial support. The ministry hopes to see more innovative research ideas and plans to bring experienced and young researchers to work together in partnership. The trade ministry said that increasing sales of more expensive cars helped the nation's auto exports reach a record high of 48.7 billion U.S. dollars last year, up more than 3 percent from a year earlier. The ministry said the average export price of Korean cars has risen nearly 40 percent in the past four years. The biggest increase in exports came from the U.S., where Hyundai Motor is stepping up its efforts to sell its luxury model, Genesis. you have bought an imported product in Korea, be it a bottle of beer or an electronic gadget, chances are you were shocked by the high price tag. And these high prices are due, in part, to importing companies controlling distribution channels. Now, however, the government is hoping to push prices down by bringing greater competition to the distribution sector. How might this work? Let's take a look. Korea is the seventh biggest exporter in the world, and by trade volume, it ranks eighth. The country is also a big importer of commodities and industrial goods. There was interesting data released recently which showed that Korean consumers are shopping directly overseas, and this exceeded 100,000 cases. Due to the advancement of communications technology, it is very easy to compare prices of global brands and consumers are searching to find bargains any way possible. The Korean government said that it will study imported goods prices and release measures to heighten price competitiveness in imported goods. It is an effort to stabilize consumer prices by implementing healthy price competition. Last year, the Consumer Career, an organization advocating consumer rights, compared prices of 60 products sold in 15 countries around the world. A Kipling bag from Belgium is sold for $99 in the US, but in Korea it is nearly double that price. A pair of Hunter's boots, which costs around $130 in the US, is about $185 in Korea. Stocker Stroller carried a price tag of about 1100 US dollars, 
but it was around $1,500 in Korea. Heineken beer was the third most expensive among 15 countries researched, while Chanel perfume was the fifth most expensive. As the findings show, global brand products were relatively more expensive when sold in Korea. 독화점 수입 제품에 대해서 특히 그 미국, 그 일본, 그 EU 등그 주요 국과 국내 가격 간의 격차가 크다는 문제 제기가 많이 되어 있었습니다. 제품을 다양하게 유통하기보다는 백화점이라는 유통 마진이 가장 높은 곳에 입점을 해서 높은 수수료를 내면서 이제 소비자들에게 고가의 마케팅 정책으로 판매가 하고 있죠. A luxury goods store located in Seoul. A mulberry bag sold for $2,000 at a department store is sold here at about $1,700. This Ferragamo bag, costing $1,200 at a department store, sells for $850. For the product, it is a Saint-Lorang Cabasic bag. It is a price of $354,000 in the market. 가격이 저렴할 수 있는 이유는 이제 한국보다 더 저렴하게 판매를 하는 매장에서 물건을 직접 수입해서 판매하기 때문에 더 저렴합니다. This store sells luxury goods bought directly from overseas through parallel imports method rather than exclusive dealership. Parallel import means an importer delivering of goods without signing an official supply contract with the foreign brand but through a direct purchase from overseas wholesalers or retailers. Even a major superstore has started parallel importing and the items of purchase have expanded to apparel, food and household necessities. Consumers are always in search of imported goods at a more affordable price, which has helped this major superstore see a growth of eight-fold in its sales of parallel imports in just five years. Products sold through parallel imports are cheaper than the ones sold by exclusive selling agents because they do not have to pay royalties to the main headquarters or spend a great amount of money in marketing. Thus, the Korean government plans to support parallel imports to endorse price competition. The Korea Customs Service has set in motion since 2012 a clearance certificate system that carries necessary information of the parallel import item, such as the importer, item name, brand name, model and country of origin, in the form of a QR code. However, people still lack confidence in parallel imports and it is difficult to get an after-service for faulty items.
Revising imported goods distribution system by the government is expected to bring reasonable consumption patterns through offering diverse means of purchasing goods. Coming away from monopoly and oligopoly on imported goods is hoped to bring about fair competition between domestic and overseas companies in price making, which will inevitably benefit the consumers. President Park Geun-hye has just completed a successful state visit to India. Now, South Korea and India have enjoyed diplomatic relations for 41 years now. How have they prospered and what is the future relationship looking like? To answer these questions and more, we are joined by India's ambassador to Korea, Vishnu Prakash. Ambassador, thank you for being on BizLine. Delighted to be with you. Greetings. Thank you and Happy New Year. Happy now, New Year. Okay. Now, I understand you joined the, uh, the presidential visit to India. Tell me first, how is Korea and, and how was President Park generally viewed uh, during this trip? What is the sentiment towards Korea um, in India? Well, India rolled out a red carpet welcome for yeah. President Park. Uh, the people and government of Lydia, India, the leadership of India, received President Park with the greatest affection and warmth. Mm. Yeah, we have a lot of goodwill for Korea in India. Our relationship, I don't know whether you know, goes back some 2,000 years, but there is a popular affection for Korea. Hmm. And uh, in recent years, Korea is seen as a technological powerhouse. And it helps when you have giants like Samsung, LG, Dusan, POSCO, which hmm. are literally household names in India. Hmm. And, um, and in short, her visit was very timely. Her visit is something that we were looking forward to. And we in India are delighted that she uh, headed for India uh, during the, in, that was her very first visit in 2014. Mm. And it was a great visit. Okay. So clearly uh, sentiment is positive. South Korea has a good brand. But what about the outcome of the visit? Let's get down to business. What were the, uh, what were the takeaways from well, this trip? Uh, as I see it, we unveiled chapter 301, so to say, of the relationship. Mm. Uh, chapter 201 started 40 years ago when we set up, the, uh, established the diplomatic relations. And mm. this time, if you see the joint statement, it's a vision document. It's a vision for how we see the relationship unfolding in the next uh, few years. Mm. And uh, we moved uh, to qualitatively elevate the relationship in all four important areas security, defense and political, yeah. one, economic and trade, two, science, technology, IT, educational, three, and people to people, four. Okay. And uh, in every side, on every, in every sphere, it was a very substantive outcome. It was uh, an outcome that I'm delighted about, and I've been here two years, so I'm one happy ambassador in Korea. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. But let's talk about the, the trade and economic uh, side of this. We are a business show, of course. Um, I understand there was a re revision to the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, which is sort of a de facto uh, free trade agreement, is it not? It is bigger than a free trade agreement because it covers security uh, services and investments also. Okay. What were, the, uh, what were the key revisions to this and what do you expect this to drive forward in the near and long terms? Well, Indian and Korean economies, first of all, I must say are complementary. Mm. Uh, India is the third largest economy in Asia, Korea is the fourth largest yeah. economy in Asia. Two, India will become the third largest economy in the world in the next 15 years. Three, India already has a large middle class or a large market but uh, by 2028, according to most projections, we'll have a, a middle class or a market of only 600 million people. Mm. So that is the size of the Indian market. 600 and million 600 consumers, million, basically. No, 600 million middle class. Middle class consumers, consumers will be larger. Yeah. So when the middle class has a lot of buying power. Mm. Uh, if they are young, they are educated. The economy is growing rapidly and uh, we have a robust GDP growth rate. Now that is the background in which the SEPA uh, or the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement was concluded four years ago. Uh, it saw a 70% increase in trade in two years to, to $20 billion. Mm. We now have a $40 billion trade target by 2015. Uh, 
you're going to double the trade volume in two years? Well, we that was a target which was established in 2012. To be okay. uh, frank, I I think there'll be a bit of a slippage because last couple of years there has been a bit of global economic slowdown, yeah. which has impacted our trade also. But uh, the trajectory the trajectory is very positive and mm. in fact according to some figures and projections we may even touch 100 billion dollars by 2020 uh, so that mm -hmm. is the kind of and it's not surprise there is no surprise at all because there's a huge demand in India mm. and Korea is it as I mentioned is a technological powerhouse and let me put it in context for you uh, companies like those uh, to Samsung and LG uh, control 55% of the market share for consumer electronics and household goods in India. Mm. 55%. Uh, Hyundai produces 650,000 vehicles a year. And uh, we are now going to invest, we have already started investing about $200 billion a year in infrastructure development. Mm. So, uh, you, you, you look at it from any side, you look at it from the side of electronics, consumer electronics, hardware, software, vehicles, infrastructure, you can see that it is a, a relationship which is of mutual benefit to both sides. And we are very encouraged by the functioning of SEPA and mm. have two sides have decided now to upgrade SEPA to bring more tariff lines within the ambit mm. to make it more efficacious, make it more, more broad based. Okay. Now, you mentioned that there's uh, major uh, Indian uh, infrastructure investment being made now. And I understand that President Park has expressed a, a strong interest in selling nuclear power plants to India. This is a, uh, a hot issue here. Um, any movement on that front? Is it likely that well, South Korean players may be part of this <coughs> sector in India? Very, in very, the very much. And I'm, uh, you know, one of the things that we need is the is energy. The second yeah. thing that we need is energy. The third thing that we need is energy. I mean, we mm. are a developing country. Mm. And when we talk of energy, we need clean energy. Mm. And clean energy is provided by either nuclear energy or renewables, other re renewable sources of energy. Yeah. And we have ambitious plans to scale up uh, the component of nuclear energy in our total energy mix. And we are looking at adding 20 to 30,000 megawatts of nuclear power in the coming 10 to 15 years. So that is the kind of ambition mm. that we have. And uh, that is why we concluded a civil nuclear cooperation agreement with Korea in, uh, in July 2011. Uh, we know that Korea is one of the leading uh, civil nuclear energy powers in the world. Mm. They have 23 uh, nuclear power, yeah. uh, nuclear uh, reactors. And uh, they almost 30 percent of their power is produced by uh, is nuclear power. So we are very keen to work closely with our Korean friends to benefit from the technological prowess in this area that they have already harnessed, and they are they have a niche for themselves in the world. Ambassador, you mentioned that India and Korea have complementary economies, and certainly India's got very strong skills in software, Korea um, in hardware, and of course in the entertainment sector, there's Bollywood in India, there's Hallyu in Korea. Can you uh, talk about how some of these complementary um, issues might start gelling uh, now uh, and in the future? Again, we have something quite similar with Korea and that is a passion for education mm. and uh, we like Korea have set up centers of educational excellence and I'm happy to note that today we have the third largest pool of trained technical and scientific manpower in the world mm. not only that India is adding 1 million engineers a year to the pool of which a quarter million are IT engineers mm. so that is the kind of scale at which uh, the scientific and technical manpower pool is expanding. So one of the results of that is that we have skills in software. We are one of the world leaders in software. Uh, and not only that, Indian scientists and engineers are working closely with uh, Korean corporate giants like Samsung. I'll give mm. you an example. Today, more than 12,000 Indian engineers uh, out of a total of 54,000 uh, engineers with Samsung, uh, mm. are, are t out, of the f out of the total of 54,000 engineers that Samsung has, 12,000 are Indians. Mm. And they are doing cutting edge research and development, pr uh, bringing out uh, new products. Samsung has set up the biggest 
R&D center, research and development center outside Korea in India. Mm. They have four research and development centers in India today, and which is in which has got 10,000 people. So that is the kind of synergies that I'm mentioning, mm. and uh, so that was just one example. Uh, but otherwise, Korean hardware, Korean technology, Indian software, Indian manpower, yeah. I think uh, come together very effectively in uh, delivering new products, in elevating qualities, in kind of pr uh, provide uh, providing cutting edge technology. Mm. And I think it's something that both sides are very happy about. Okay. Um, you've mentioned the Korean companies operating in India. What about Indian companies operating here in Korea? I believe Mahindra's a significant investor, uh, Tata also. Um, what are some of the uh, the big players Well, here? Tata and Mahindra certainly, and then also we have the House of Birlas, uh, which is B-I-R-L-A, Birla. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a $2 billion investment in Korea uh, in the form of Novelis. Uh, they, they are an aluminum sheet maker, an aluminum mm -hmm. component maker. Uh, Aditya Birla Group, had bought out Novelis uh, globally a few mm -hmm. years ago, and two of their plants are in Korea, okay. where there is an investment of $2 billion. And uh, I'm happy about it because uh, the footprint of Indian companies is now growing worldwide, as you are perhaps aware, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is Cora Steel or it is Jaguar Land Rover mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, I, I can name quite a few. Indian companies are making sizable investments yeah. And Korea is becoming a popular and an attractive destination. And most of the Indian companies, then we have a bunch of Indian IT companies who are doing good work. So we are happy that uh, from both sides, Korean and Indian investments and Indian and Korean companies uh, who have made a mark for themselves on the world scene and the domestic scene are moving into each other's countries. How would you like to see the Korea-Indian business relationship um, in the future. Let's talk medium and long terms. So you've talked about trade volumes, investment volumes. Um, how would you like to see it developing in, uh, in an ideal world? Well, uh, we are very much on that trajectory and uh, let me mention two or three things that have happened this time. Yeah. One is that two countries have decided to set up a CEO's forum okay. and uh, we are hoping that in the next couple of months we can not only form the CEO's forum which will have uh, CEOs from the, the large conglomerates as well as the SMEs mm. uh, from both sides. Yeah. And we will have the first meeting of the CEOs Forum very soon. Now, CEOs Forum, uh, we have this with a few major countries, few of our major partners. And as you s uh, can see, it b becomes a very important mechanism to broaden uh, the scope of engagement. So that is one. Uh, I'm happy to mention that POSCO project has uh, shown a lot of uh, uh, movement. This is the steel mill, which the is steel. hopefully be under construction fairly soon. I mean, there are some very political issues surrounding that. Uh, there right? was issues on, on acquisition of land. India is a, develop in India is a democratic country and mm -hmm. uh, you have to build consensus for sure. acquisition of land. But most of the hurdles have been cleared yeah. and that's a $12 billion investment. Mm. And it's an integrated township which will be coming up, so you can see the impact. Yeah. Three, as importantly, and especially for the SME sector, Kotra has decided to set up an industrial park, uh, a Korean industrial park in Rajasthan, which is one of the Indian states. Mm. And where we will basically, it will be on the manufacturing side, and most of the, uh, the companies that will be going in will be the SMEs. So uh, again, uh, I'm mentioning that because this is one area where Korean and Indian SMEs uh, can, can collaborate closely with each other to mutual advantage. And we see that the beginning of that. Another happy development has been that KITA, Korea International Trade Association, mm. has set up, decided to set up an office in Delhi. Okay. And they do it only with very important partner countries. And again, that is something which we should boost for the trade and economic relations. So we have already taken a slew of initiatives. I've already mentioned that we are looking at upgradation of SEPA. So we are uh, building the edifice for a qualitative increase or a boost in trade and economic ties. Okay. 
Last question, Ambassador. I think that the global community and the global business community is, is very strongly focused on China, the Asia giant, and of course the Japanese story is well known. India is now obviously the number three economy in Asia. As you say, the middle class is going through the roof. Do you think the global community and the global business community is focused enough on India at present? And if not, what should the Indian authorities be doing to raise your profile internationally? Well, the global community <coughs> is focused for the simple reason that India uh, offers huge economic opportunities, mm. huge bus business opportunities, and they can see that happening. Uh, from our side, we have also a constraint in, this in, in that uh, we need to improve our infrastructure. Mm. And uh, I'm happy to note that government is spending big bucks. Uh, I men did mention that something like $200 billion mm. year after year after year are being invested into infrastructure and I see this being done over the next 25 years. So uh, a as the Indian economy opens up, as the mm. Indian economy globalizes, as uh, the infrastructure improves further, uh, businesses and uh, you know uh, already the there is a india is seen as an important uh, or a attractive destination and i'll cite figures for you 2012 2011 we had uh, fdi foreign direct investment mm. of 35 billion dollars mm. 2012 was about 22 billion dollars so yes uh, there india is attractive we it is our for it's in our interest to make it even more an attractive a des destination have even a more attractive uh, environment for doing business, and we are determined to do so. Thank you. Ambassador, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, good luck with your future endeavors here in Korea. And thanks for appearing on BizLine. Thank you very much. Lovely talking to you. It has All been. the best. Okay. Traditionally, signage was simply words painted on boards. But in Korea today, it's out with the old, in with the new, as traditional signage is replaced by digital display. Naturally, this technology continues to evolve. The current generation of digital signage is sharper in definition, larger in size, and a whole lot more exciting than ever before. What will be the fourth screen in modern life after the television, personal computer, and smartphone? Let's meet the digital signage that is evolving into components of big cities and two-way customized media. Public displays that deliver personalized advertisements by scanning people have already been commercialized, even though they can't identify personal information as in movies. It controls the vehicle on the screen by connecting the smartphone to the screen. If the existing outdoor displays just unilaterally delivered information, digital signage is evolving into a new media that implements two-way content through networking. 큰 대형 그 전광판상에 그 자기 모습이 투영되면서 그 겉에 테두리의 모습은 자동차를 마치 타고 있는 그런 모습으로 구현되는 소비자들로 하여금 참여를 이끌게 해야 되고 그만큼 어 거기에 광고에 대한 몰입 사람들이 그것을 쳐다보는 몰입도 이런 것이 높아지게 돼서 광고의 효과들 같은 것도 굉장히 높아지고 브랜드에 대한 인지도 이런 것도 굉장히 높일 수 있는 그런 방안으로 어, 활용되고 있는 것이죠. The global digital signage market is expected to go rapidly to 13.8 billion US dollars in 2015. As the market grows, its effects on the domestic economy is also likely to pick up. Currently, Samsung Electronics holds the biggest market share in the global digital signage market, while LG Electronics holds the third largest share. Like this, digital signage is a sector Korean companies have an unrivaled technological competitiveness. Recently, they even launched digital signage with ultra-high definition level resolution. By using IPS panels, users can clearly see images on the screen from any angle. A new type of digital signage is emerging as the ultra-high definition displays enabled networking. This company gained favorable responses when it introduced digital signage at the KCON Festival in Los Angeles. It developed a transparent mesh screen showing holographic images. 
This transparent mesh screen developed by Domestic Technologies has a transparency of around 89%. As if looking at a window, the scenery beyond the screen is seen right through it. 대형 유리창에 투명 필름을 부착하여 영상을 투사하는 기술을 구현하고 있습니다. 투명 플렉서블 OLED는 투명 소재의 영상 신호가 자체 발광하는 기술로 백라이트가 필요한 기존 TLCD를 대체할 것으로 예상되며 멀지 않은 미래에는 쇼케이스 형태가 아닌 OLED 필름 타입으로 일반 거울이나 유리창에도 디지털 사이니지를 구현할 수 있을 것으로 기대하고 있습니다. Moreover, screens that can be activated by the touch of a hand are also being developed for interactive contents. 스크린에는 IR 터치 센서, 공간 감지 초음파와 포토 센서, 제스처 모션 인식에는 키넥트 센서를 활용해서 사용자 반응을 인식하고 이를 콘텐츠 구현 프로그램에 적용해서 자연스러운 체험을 할수 있도록 하고 있습니다. As digital signage is used in outdoor advertising, size is also a crucial factor. If so, what is the maximum size of digital signage? Korea Institute of Science and Technology, or KIST, is conducting a study on digital signage. Here, a supersized display has been installed. Until now, the maximum size of an interactive enabled screen was 70 inches. However, using this technology, the screen's width can be lengthened indefinitely while detecting hand touch of up to 120 people. 아, 일반적으로 적외선 array type을 쓰게 되면은 사각 테두리, 내변 테두리의 방식으로 사, 사용되는데 두 개의 바만 상하에 설치하는 그런 타입으로 일반 디스플레이에다가 멀티 터치가 가능한 적외선 센서 this supersized interactive digital signage is attracting the most attention from the advertising industry. It can maximize advertising effects as it can induce participation from consumers and is easy to expose outdoors. But advertisement isn't the only reason digital signage is under the spotlight. It is much anticipated as public media because it can continuously deliver necessary information through networking. 긴급 재난 정보라든지 또는 어그 범죄 수사와 관련된 정보들 이런 것들을 그 옥에 있는 매체들을 네트워킹화 연결시켜서 빠르게 그 소비자들에게 시민들에게 전달함으로써. 공공적인 차원에 있어서도 디지털 사이니지라고 하는 현상은 굉장히 중요하다라고 말씀드릴 수 있겠습니다. There may soon come a day when personalized information can be provided by combining biometrics and big data technologies as seen in the movies. 소비자의 얼굴이나 뭐 인식을 해서 그 소비자의 성별이나 나이를 구분하고 그 사람의 정보를 어 보관해뒀다가 데이터베이스에 저장해뒀다가 소비자들에게 맞춤형 형식으로 이제 계속 전개될 테니까요. 어, 효과는 더 극대화되고 이런 식의 어프로치는 계속 더 아, 강화돼 나갈 것이다. Digital signage is evolving from large outdoor electric displays to two-way customized media. It remains to be seen whether it can become the fourth screen as the ICT community expects. Across the world, adults drive cars, children play with toy cars. But inevitably, the dreaded day will come when a teenager will say to his or her parents, Hey, can I take out the car? This raises a question. Can there be a halfway house between a real car and a toy car? There can. In the past, kiddie cars tended to be pedal powered but the latest versions are electric, meaning there are now kitty cars which children can actually drive. Kids always want what adults have, and there are so many products out there for children to mimic the lifestyle of adults. So-called adult kids culture, in which kids are preferring products in order to act like adults, has been going around for several years. Starting from the US and Europe, such trends are spreading out through various fields. 부모님들이 
어, 우리 아이들도 충분히 이 헐리우드 배우들처럼 이렇게 해외에 트렌디한 사람들처럼 그렇게 소비를 했으면 좋겠다. 이런 욕망 때문에 적극적으로 구매를 합니다. 물론 아이들도 그런 것들을 사는 것을 참 좋아하고요. 이런 것들이 맞물리면서 이런 현상이 확산되고 있다고 볼수 있습니다. 이런 소비 환경에 노출될 수밖에 없는 사회에 사는데 너무 부정적으로 막기보다는 오히려 긍정적으로 한번 소비를 할수 있는 것들을 학습한다는 차원에서 이렇게 경험하는 그런 측면에서 접근한다면 분명히 긍정적인 측면도 찾아볼 수 있다고 생각합니다. Among such adult kid items, most popular items among boys are children's electric ride-on cars. The global kids electric ride-on car market is expected to grow on average 26.6% annually, and in two years, 2016, the market is forecasted to surpass 2 billion US dollars. A store specializing in electric ride-on cars. Although it is more expensive than ordinary toys, there has been an increase in the number of customers seeking electric cars in Korea. 애기들이 다 아버님이나 어머님께서 운전하시는 걸 보고 애기들이 차를 굉장히 좋아해요. 어렸을 때부터. 그래서 뭐 이르면은 6개월, 뭐 8개월부터도 오시는 분들이 계시고 굉장히 애기들이 좋아하다 보니까 부모님들께서 인터넷으로 아무리 검색해서 확인하시고 알아보시고 점점 늘어나고 있는 추세입니다. Among several kids' electric ride-on car manufacturers of small and medium size in Korea, we have visited Hennes to find out the secret behind their success. Hennes had once imported electric cars, but after leasing popular foreign car brands and with its own technology, it entered the global electric ride-on car market, which is currently dominated by low-priced Chinese products. 기존의 업체들 대부분이 이제 뭐 어떤 기술적인 부분이나 이런 것보다는 어떤 디자인이나 가격적인 측면에서만 제품을 개발하고 이렇게 판매를 했었는데 저희는 애들이 타는 자동차라는 개념에서 어떤 기술이나 안전성을 확보할 수 있는 원천 기술 개발에 계속 투자를 했었기 때문에 어떤 부모들의 입장에서 봤을 때는 뭐 충분히 자기 아이들한테 보다 안전하고 좋은 차를 태워주려고 했을 테니까 일단 그러한 마음들을 좀 이해할 수 있었던 그러한 부분들이 저희, 제, 저희 제품이 세계 시장이나 국내 시장에서 인증을 받았던 요인이 아닌가 하고 생각을 합니다. Safety is of utmost importance for kids' electric ride-on cars because our precious children drive them. The first generation electric car only has drive and stop functions, but Hennes offers more driving features to meet children's different age groups as well as setting speed limits to maximize safety. 어린이들이 탑승 시에 급출발, 급제동에 의해서 발생할 수 있는 안전 사고에 대해서 미연에 방지할 수 있도록 부드럽게 출발하고 부드럽게 제어할 수 있게끔 하는 비례 제어 시스템을 구현을 했고요. 주변 환경이 갑자기 급경사가 나오거나 아니면 오르막길이 올랐을 때 일정한 속도로 유지될 수 있도록 평상시에도 항상 일정한 속도로 유지함으로써 안정성을 확보하기 위한 기술이 적용됐습니다. The materials used are not harmful to the body, nor do they disrupt hormone systems. And we have acquired certificates in Europe to prove that we are environmentally friendly, which contributed to increase in exports. Not only that, Hennes has developed a third-generation electric ride-on car, which is soon to be released, boasting the latest technology and functions. They have designed the car ergonomically to help children feel comfortable and safe when riding a Hennes. It has the same platform structure as an actual car, while containing educational and entertainment features with an Android tablet PC installed. A kid's electric ride-on car, which was once considered just a toy, has now become the likes of a real vehicle. 우리가 일반적으로 말하는 자동차에서 쓰는 기본 플랫폼 시스템 그대로 따랐고 외장 형태를 플랫폼에다가 블록 형태로 탈부착을 쉽게 용이하게 할수 있게끔 해서 때로는 세단, 때로는 집차 여러 가지 형태의 모양을 고객이 요구에 따라서 다양하게 변화할 수 있게끔 그렇게 조치를 했고 안드로이드 OS 기반의 태블릿 PC를 탑재함으로써 전동차와 연동된 게임, 애니메이션, 교육 등 다양한 컨텐츠를 제공함으로써 부모 또는 아이들의 입장에서의 다양한 교육과 그다음에 관련된 컨텐츠들을 받을 수 있게끔 이런 부분들을 고려해서 적용했다는 것이 다른 기술과 큰 차이점이라고 볼수 있겠습니다. A plaza at Gyeonggi-do Province. There are children riding Hennes products and parents who have bought their children's first car, a Hennes. Both parents and children are satisfied with its variety of functions and safety features distinguishable from existing products.
안전성 면에서도 아주 좋고 다양한 기능도 있고 뭐또 우리가 꾸밀 수도 있고 그런 면이 아주 마음에 들었습니다. Through constant research and development, Hennes has become a high-quality kids electric ride-on car producer. It has only been a year since it introduced the model made purely of domestic technology and already its products have taken 60% of the Korean market share, easily taking the number one spot. It is the only Korean company that has succeeded in securing overseas buyers and is now selling in 29 countries around the world, also making its name in the global toy market. 부모의 마음이나 아이들의 마음을 이해할 수 있는 이러한 기술과 컨텐츠들을 끊임없이 개발함으로써 어떻게 보면은 세계 전동차 시장 자체의 어떤 기술이나 트렌드를 선도할 수 있는 인류 기업으로 자리 잡을 것이라고 생각합니다. Kids electric ride-on car market was once dominated by the products made in China. Hennes has penetrated the market by focusing on developing a toy that children can enjoy safely. The toy that is safe and offering high quality features is expected to take the global market by storm. In his New Year's address, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un once again heavily emphasized economic growth. However, North Korea ceased publishing economic data over 40 years ago, so it's extremely difficult to discern the outline of the North Korean industrial and economic structure. Given this, we'll be analyzing some data compiled by the South Korean government and seeing what light this sheds on North Korea's economic landscape. Through his New Year's message this year, North Korea's young leader Kim Jong-un emphasized again the importance of reviving his nation's economy and improving the living standards of his people. At the same time, he praised the great achievements made last year in strengthening the economy and improving the quality of people's daily lives. In reality, various economy and industry-related data indicate that the secretive state still suffers from a moribund economy as the country faces isolation from the international community over its nuclear ambition. North Korea's economy is estimated to have expanded in 2011 and 2012, according to calculations released by South Korea's central bank last year. Gross domestic product in the reclusive socialist country increased 1.3% in 2012 after a 0.8% gain in 2011. The North's economy has contracted four of the last seven years until 2012. But the imbalance of its economy may put an end to that growth. 국내 자원이 부족하고 해외 자원은 지금 중국 외에는 그 어, 투입할 수 있는 여지가 지금 없는 거죠. 가장 중요한 생산 부문의 정상화 자체가 쉽지가 않기 때문에 단기간의 경제 회복 또는 경제 정상화 쉽지 않을 거다라고 이제 저는 보는 거죠. In North Korea, the agriculture, forestry and fishing sector remains one of the leading industries with about 20% share of its economy, a typical structure seen in underdeveloped countries. Meanwhile, the North's manufacturing sector has remained sluggish since it was hit hard by the economic recession in the 1990s, further delaying its economic development. The manufacturing sector isn't the only industry that's suffering. Other sectors remain inert without a sign of any imminent recovery, leaving the country's economy caught in the poverty trap. 1990년대 초 중반에 사회주의 경제권이 무너짐에 따라서 원유 수입 등이 줄어들었고 그 다음에 수혜와 그에 따른 식량난 그리고 김일성의 사망 등이 겹쳐서 어, 1990년대 초에 석탄, 전력 등의 공급이 극, 극도로 줄어들었고 그에 따라서 종합공업의 가동률이 20 내지 30%에 불과할 정도로 전체적인 산업이 위축되었습니다. That's not all. While the secretive socialist state's key industries are energy, heavy, and chemical sectors, the majority of the country's power stations are outdated, so much so that it is hard to significantly increase their power-generating capacity. North Korea's total power capacity in 2012 was 7.22 million kilowatts, lower than 81.81 million kilowatts in the south. Energy is the most important issue of energy. 금속, 기계, 화학공업 등을 그 개보수해서 여기서 
그 경공업과 농업을 위한 원부자재 공급을 늘리려는 노력을 계속해 왔습니다만 일단 투자 재원이 부족하니 부족하고요. 그리고 이들 기간 산업의 설비가 워낙 낙후되어 있어서 어지간한 투자로서는 생산을 회복시키기 어려운 상황입니다. One ray of hope is the increase in mining output, led by the secret of totalitarian states' continued efforts to be self-reliant on energy and raw material production. Despite the recent increase in mining activities, the country still lacks energy and raw materials needed to revive the country's manufacturing production that suffers from outdated facilities and technologies. In 2012, the North's crude steel production reached 1.22 million tons, much lower than the South's 69.07 million tons. 다이간접 자본 역시 북한의 현재 산업의 어려움을 가중시키고 있고 더 중요한 것은 북한이 경제를 회복하기 위해서는 외국의 자본을 유치를 해야 되는데 이 낙후된 사회간접 자본이 외국 자본의 유치를 가로막는 요인으로도 작용하고 있습니다. The total length of roads in the north stood at 26,114 kilometers, nearly a quarter of the 105,703 kilometers in the south. Since the economic recession in the 1990s, North Korea's mortality rate has increased, while the birth rate has been on the decline, putting a cap on the North's population growth. As of 2012, its population stood at 24.43 million, nearly half of South Korea's entire population. 94년 고난행군 시기 때그 극심한 영양 부족에 시달렸었고 많은 영유아가 또 사망을 했고 그때 또 살아남았다고 한 그런 그 아이들이 지금 20여 년이 지났죠. 그래서 지금 이제 북한의 중추적 생산 산업 소위 말하는 산업 인력화가 돼야 되는데 그 영유아 시기 때 굉장히 그 영양 결핍에 시달렸기 때문에 건전한 소위 말하는 건강한 산업 인력으로 지금 성장했느냐 첫 번째 굉장히 중요한 문제고 With the economy in a recession in all sectors, the reclusive totalitarian state urgently needs support from the outside world. But there are hurdles North Korea will have to overcome to receive such external help and lure foreign investment. 문제 해결되지 않은 상태에서 북한 경제의 근본적인 회복은 불가능하다고 단언해도 뭐 되겠습니다. 반면에 북한이 그핵 문제가 어느 정도 진전이 되면 북한이 가지고 있는 노동력을 활용하기 위해서 한국이라든지 중국, 그 다음에 일본 등에서 상당히 적극적인 투자가 이루어질 가능성이 있고 그렇게 되면 북한이 빠른 시일 내에 상당한, 상당한 정도의 성장을 이룰 가능성도 있습니다. Continued nuclear and missile provocations have isolated Pyongyang, further increasing its reliance on China for international trade. Not only that, almost 70% of the country's export revenues comes from sales of minerals. Such an imbalance in international trade could undermine the country's economic development in the mid to long term. North Korea's per capita income reached about 1,291 U.S. dollars in 2012, which was 1 19th of South Korea's 24,107 U.S. dollars. Leadership and vision are there. 또 어떤 물적 인적 자원이 있고 그 다음에 어떤 그런 것들을 어, 단순한 한 번에 어, 진행되는 게 아니고 어, 제도화시키고 보다 정착시킬 수 있는 시스템 구조로 연결이 되는 게 어, 이제 경제 소위 말하는 개혁의 기본 조건들이죠. 어, 그렇다고 했을 때 지금 북한의 특히 북한 김정은 체제 등장의 그세 가지 요인 중에 어떤 부분에서 큰 변화가 있었느냐 어, 굉장히 그 변화가 있었다라고 얘기하기는 힘든 상황입니다. Despite the latest improvements in crop yields and mining output, North Korea's economy and people's living standards are still in poor condition. And that is all we have time for on BizLine this week. But do join us again next week. We'll be heading for Davos and seeing what role President Park is playing among the high and the mighty at the World Economic Forum. But that's it for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was Bizline. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.